we've all had struggles and and uh you know questions and hesitations with the t- the energy that we spend and like i was saying i mean it's evolved for me so i think in the beginning like there was a time in my life when it was a huge struggle to give up on cardiovascular activity because i really love to run and i you know it was really really difficult and like a year long process for me at least it's talking to trainers talking to people and and basically having them say look if you want to have the most amount of energy possible for a rock climbing training then you should consider not doing all these running activities kind of thing you know um and and i was the kind of guy that run on rest days never giving mm-hmm. myself or rest and that was another really difficult I struggled with that I struggled with like letting go of that activity and that like kind of uh tireless desire to be exercising you know well on the running just before we move on from that because I think this is really interesting and you know you're you're you have many superpowers but I think like a a top superpower of, of yours certainly what you're known for is staving off these in, incredibly pumpy climbs these really long hard relentless um, power endurance style climbing and I wonder if you know that really heavy generalized cardio base that maybe came from running or I know like you're into mountain biking and that kind of thing as well mm-hmm can you attribute some of your climbing success and your style of climbing to that or you know were these people that you were talking to just saying like look you're actually siphoning away energy from what you should be doing is more mileage on route like cardio but cardio while climbing as opposed to cardio while running i think it's steve bechtel who said this originally um i can't remember where i read it for the first time but he said that he said running is as good for your climbing as climbing is good for your running um and i and i think that what he meant by that was basically they're so different in nature that if you you know and and the reality is is that i i used to love running and like like throughout my youth i was riding my mountain bike a lot and racing mountain bikes and so it brought me a ton of joy and and for a lot of people it's worth it to make a light sacrifice in a climbing performance to have the joy that comes from that so i sure. totally give those people like as much space as they want to take um for for those things but hey y'all thanks so much for watching these videos quick 30 seconds to tell you about the patreon that i've started to help fund this massive operation running out of my podcast slash youtube slash utility closet which i'm coming to you from right here Um, Check out the Patreon down below. I've got pro clinics with some of the biggest names in the sport, exclusive for patrons, helping you learn how to level up in your training and your performance, all sorts of other bonus content. Appreciate your support. Check it out. I do think that you hinted on something interesting too, and I don't know if my experiences with so much cardiovascular activity directly helped my climbing. That could very well be true, like from a physiological standpoint but i can say that from a mental emotional standpoint it definitely helped because i think that i spent so much time kind of in the pain box that i was able to when i transitioned into more climbing i was really able to like keep going even when i felt like i wanted i so badly wanted to give up i think that that's one of those like skills that you learn when like doing long runs or when like especially mountain bike racing like when i used to race mountain bikes cross country it's so much about like pain like just being mm-hmm. like just like deep in the pain you know and trying to pass somebody uphill when you've already been riding for 11 miles or whatever is like so agonizing so i think some of that definitely helped me on those like really long routes to kind of keep to have the the courage to kind of keep trying even though i felt like there was no way you know um and they're probably, like I said, there might have been some physiological advantages too, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily take anything back, but I also probably would recommend that if a, a 10-year-old kid really wanted to be good at rock climbing, I wouldn't tell them to just run for the next six years. I would tell them to go in the gym and, you know, use the tension board or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that's interesting. And, and I have read some similar things on that um, with regard to just like getting generalized cardio or, you know, the 
capillary development that you you know you would just do like some real moderate 30 minutes on a tread wall you know as opposed to 30 minutes on a treadmill um you know which is interesting but i i think yeah sanity comes into play as well and it's like if we're all just most of us are climbing for fun rather than paying the bills and so it's like yeah you know if like taking a run once a week brings you some joy then does it matter all that much if it's like not leveling up your climbing that much more yeah totally yeah i mean you're you know the strongest sport climber in the country you're one of the strongest sport climbers in the world right now um there's there's an assumption sometimes that uh athletes at your level um there's an ease that comes to the training um and there isn't maybe a lot of struggle because we don't see it um and, and maybe by the, by the way maybe it does come easy but um would be very <laughs> curious to hear <laughs> where where you have or where you do struggle in your training yeah, I mean, man, that's another thing that has just evolved so much for me over the years. For the first decade of my climbing, I didn't really do anything that you would consider training. I really just went training a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, as I learned more about, and, and I was more ambitious to like change. After, basically, once I felt like just the climbing wasn't doing enough for me, then I started to think more and adopt more ideology around training. And, and practice around training. Um, but I, I think that, uh, I think that generally speaking, like exactly like you said, I think all the things that go unseen is really what it's kind of all about. Like I can't, um, I can't like share every element of my life, nor do I necessarily want to. Struggle is kind of, you have the beginning and the end and struggles, everything in between. Right. Um, yeah. and, I mean, in regards to climbing, I think that just efforts and, um, commitment, and I'm trying to think of some words that are analogous to struggle, you know, but I, I think that when I think about struggle, I just think about, um, kind of trying without any definite certainty about the outcome hmm. um and and that's like uh not always the case but you know a large part that's the case like you said no matter what level you're at i think that it wouldn't be fun if we knew for certain if we'd succeed or not or if we knew if we knew exactly how to do some route or to to get stronger or whatever it was if if it was like um, if it was really obvious, I don't think that it would be that fun for all of us. So, so I think that, that figuring it out and kind of like dealing with the unknown is part of the interesting thing about climbing. <laughs>